Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, as I promised, I'm gonna make a blue velvet dress and uh, I found some beautiful dresses online. Um, I really want to make a call neck like the two left ones, uh, but I want uh, the normal shoulder straps, so not the thin one as the brown one and not the halter neck as the red one, but just normal shoulder straps, uh, but certainly the call neck. And what I liked of the white picture, uh, the skirt with the web over part uh, and with the, the pleats on different places, the white part of the skirt has the pleats uh, from the waist down and the left part of the skirt has the pleats from the sides. Uh, so I really like that. Uh, it, it gives a different look and especially with the velvet, the light falls on the velvet and that gives a really nice uh, color, uh, color effect. So we're gonna make that. Uh, and what I wanna do is I want a uh, sort of a string going around your waist so that you can cinch in your, your waist and you don't have to make your dress too tight. You can just make it a little bit loose and cinch it in with, with the string. And then you give it some more or so less, uh, depending on how much you've eaten with the holidays. Um, and for the back, I want to make a V-neck. I couldn't find a picture about it, but uh, we make a deeper V-neck in the back uh, with a blind zipper, so that it looks very nice. Um, so that's the inspiration. So and this is my drawing. Um, what I made is the cowl neck in the front. Uh, I want some uh, shoulder straps, not too wide, but also not too small, so that you can just wear a bra underneath it. Uh, I want the top um, not really tight, because it's for the holidays, so you want some extra room to, uh, to so you can eat a little bit more if you want to. Uh, so I made it just a little bit uh, on the waist uh, size, but not really too tight. Um, I make the web uh, front of the skirt and I want some pleats on the right part from the waist down, three pleats. And from the left part, I want three pleats from the side. So these patterns uh, are both um, uh, different. So we have to see, uh, we have to watch carefully how that looks. Um, for the back, I want that deep v-neck and it ends in the zipper that goes in the uh, top part and on the skirt part. Um, just some the same with uh, shoulder straps as the, in the front. Um, and I want also this not too tight, but also not too um, loose. Um, maybe I will make darts here. I don't know. I only do it when it's really too wide because I want some width, because I want a string here as in a web dress. Um, I think I will take it from here and here and then going all around to the, uh, to the back and then make a bow here. I like that web dress effect and that it cinch in a bit in the back. Um, I like that more than when it's really tight on and that gives you some more movement um, and it's not that, that tight. I think I'd like that more in this fabric because it's a water thick fabric. It gives you some air when it's not really that tight on. So I'm gonna make that. Um, I think I don't make a slit here. I think we don't need it because we have, I think, a water high slit here. So I um, make this uh, closed and you only have the zipper here. So that is my drawing. And now we're going to make the pattern for this. So for the pattern for the front, it's uh, pretty easy. We start with a basic uh, front uh, top pattern and uh, take your measurements as you made uh, before. Uh, in my very first video I uh, learned you how you can take your own measurements. I made also a special video only uh, about taking measurements and I will link it down below so you can see how you can do that. And this is just a basic pattern where you uh, measure your uh, torso length, your chest, your waist, it's always quarter, quarter chest, quarter waist, your armhole, and you trace that as your basic pattern. And what we're gonna do is I draw a line here. We're gonna cut it there, almost through, but you hold it attached there. So you make a long snip almost to the end. And then what you do is you're gonna take another piece of paper, you lay it on there, and then you open it up. And the more you open it, the lower your um, 
front will drop down so your cold neck will be lower when you open this more so it's best not to open it more than about 45 degrees otherwise it will it will get a, a way too low skip and if you like that certainly do that but that's not what i was looking for then we're gonna trace this out and uh, then we're gonna uh, put the facing on top of it so i first gonna trace it and then i come back for the uh, top part so i traced all around and then you can take this away Then you go your mid front you draw all the way up and you connect <coughs> your shoulder with the front with a little bit of a dip not too much because otherwise then again the um, call neck will drop too low so you go just a little bit down like that then we're gonna trace this part out uh, because that we're gonna uh, uh, pin or um, what's the word we're gonna put that on top uh, on top of this as the facing so we're gonna take another piece of paper we're gonna trace the top part out and we're gonna flip it over as the facing Was like this and then we're gonna glue it on with some tape on here and then we have our facing for the call neck uh, on, uh, attached on the front part and then we have the whole front part together now for the back I laid it down a bit strange but I want to show you how you can um, measure where you need your uh, shoulders to be so I took my um, the former uh, pattern for the front that I haven't uh, taken out because then you can exactly, exactly see where is the mid front and the mid back and you can align your shoulder with that now I see that my shoulders are too wide so I have to adjust that a little bit so this one for the front and there so you just align it so that they are the same width so this was the wrong one and that's for the shoulder and then it's the same as the front, very easy. Uh, take your armhole, dip your chest width and your quarter chest and your quarter waist. And I measured how low down I wanted my uh, mid uh, back to be. I measured 25. As I look now, I think it is rather low. So I think I'm gonna measure it again. It is not too low because I want my bra to wear underneath it. So I'm gonna measure if this is okay because when I cut it too low, I can uh, put something. Uh, I cannot add something, so I'm gonna measure if that is okay. Uh, but then this will be your uh, back pattern, so pretty easy. And here again with the back, I'm gonna trace this out again so that I have my facing the, exactly the same um, uh, as the back is, and then I don't have to hem this or whatever. I can just put a facing on, and that is nice to finish. Then, so I'm gonna trace this. And then I have that finished too. Well, I decided that I wanted for the facing for my front part also a bit more so that I don't have to uh, hem this whole armhole. So I folded this facing in downwards. Then I'm gonna uh, tape a little bit of extra paper to it. So that I can make the piece of uh, facing a bit more. So I'm going to make this a straight line here. And then I'm going to draw the armhole. And then we have nice... A nice facing for the whole front part for the shoulder part and the most part of the armhole and just this little on the arm part uh, that's not that uh, that difficult to uh, give it a nice small hem but then the most visible part is secured now so then the facing looks like this now okay so this is the pattern for the right side of the front um, 
it, it should be like this but then it's not clear to see I think so I lay it like this this is the top this is the bottom this is the mid front <coughs> and uh, because I want uh, an overlap in the front and I want it curved out I added 10 centimeters here and I made a curve to the side what I did is I measured how much my uh, quarter waist was and uh, for that I added uh, three um, pleats I want to make and I want them to be 8 centimeters so uh, this, uh, on top of my uh, quarter waist I added 3 times 8 so 24 centimeters and then we got these measurements from the mid front so then you get this line and um, I uh, marked the pleats here but I can see where I want them to be it doesn't matter as long as I have 3 times 8 for the pleats um, and what I also did, um, oh and because we have this pleat, your uh, hip measurement doesn't matter because now uh, it's more 24 centimeters more than your waist and I think that most people um, that will fit for the, for the hips otherwise you can go a bit uh, out if you need some more uh, for your hip uh, measurements. And also mark this uh, line because I want to have a facing to um, finish this uh, this edge of the skirt uh, so I'm gonna make a strip of fabric as this as the facing so you don't have to make a pattern for that you can just cut it out of uh, fabric so this is the right side of the uh, front with the pleats the, the, these were gonna fold in to the mid or to the side it doesn't even matter then we go to the left side of the skirt and that is of course the same um, pattern um, but um, not with the pleats because the pleats are different so I still have the mid front here the 10 centimeters overlap uh, is this the right side no I have to no it's the right side um, and I uh, wanted to have pleats Put like this because it's the left one like this this is the side this is the front uh, this is the mid so because I wanted to have the pleats now here at the side I cannot just add in on top because otherwise this will get longer too so you could do that and, and make the curve here but I think it's nicer to do the same as we did for the top to um, mark where you want your pleats to be just about uh, cut it in almost till the end and then open it up and you can make a new pattern now out of paper but you can also do this just on your fabric and then cut it out like this if you pin this then you don't have to need to make another pattern out of paper you can do it just like this so it's exact uh, the same um, your quarter um, waist your quarter hip <coughs> mark where your hip uh, height is and um, and as you can see when I do it like this I made it a bit going out and I made the rounding on this and also here you make um, your facing uh, the same curve the same line as you had for the other part so this is the left front and then we have the back and that is an easy one we have here the mid back I marked where my zipper is gonna end uh, mark your quarter waist with a little bit extra um, I don't want it too loose but I don't want it too tight so I give it just a centimeter and I can see if I want to make darts here when it's really too tight too loose or uh, because I want um, a string to uh, go around the waist as a kind of a belt I like it when it's just a little bit wider then it's not really tight so I made <coughs> quarter waist plus some one centimeter about um, my quarter hip and I flared it out just a little bit and the bottom is just straight so that's an easy one so those are the patterns we're gonna cut it out out of uh, fabric and then I'll come back to show you where we start the sewing so I cut out all my pieces and one time I thought oh my gosh I have too little of fabric but I wasn't thinking and then you get problems because I forgot that I had one piece for my front and one piece for the other side of my front so 
I only had to cut the front pieces one time and not double as we normally do so I almost went wrong but I uh, thought of it before I started cutting so I could uh, get it around and um, now I had some fabric left so it wasn't a problem but think before you cut what you have to cut and how you have to cut it uh, normally you have a lot of things to cut on the fold now it is only the uh, top front uh, I show you later on that you have to cut on the fold the rest is uh, just normal cut out so this part is my uh, back part of the skirt uh, <clears throat> that has a seam in the back front so not on the fold then I have my left and my right uh, front parts of the skirt uh, with the facing I already cut out and I was afraid that I didn't have enough uh, fabric for all the pleats that I wanted to uh, to have here on top of it but I managed to uh, to do it because I have to cut out this one just once and the other side also just once so that's uh, for the skirt we're gonna continue with that later on because we're first gonna start with the top part of the dress this is the front part that is the only piece you have to cut on the fold so here was the fold I uh, folded the facing back in because that's what we're going to sew first we're going to sew uh, the facing here on the armhole on the left on the right side make sure you uh, cut in the uh, shoulder part a little bit because otherwise you don't have enough uh, opening here to put the other shoulder part from the back in so Cut it a bit more open in the uh, pat uh, on the fabric and the pattern. It's this part is that um, V, and because when you uh, cut with a seam allowance, you uh, get a bit uh, of a uh, centimeter left. Cut that in to the fold because otherwise your opening for the shoulder is too small. So we're gonna sew those two for the armholes. Then we're gonna sew. The two facings on the back this way it is and we're gonna sew here also the armhole and the mid front v uh, v neck leave this open the shoulder when we've done this <coughs> we're gonna open it up you have then sewn this together and then what you do the shoulder part where I had a pin now to hold them together this part is open and you push that in between the um, facing and the front part so this is your front <coughs> make sure you have the right side up and you put the shoulder part here in where the shoulder opening is from the front so you put your fingers in take your shoulder part in and then you sew here and when you open it up you have a nicely finished uh, shoulder armhole this whole thing is finished just in one step so that's what we're gonna do now uh, and then I'll come back to show you the rest uh, of the finishing for the for the top and I'm gonna for, go further with this scratch always make sure you have pressed your seams and especially now because this nest need to be very nice and neat so press them down very well with a cloth on top of it and now we're gonna put the shoulders into the other one into the front so we're gonna stick them in make sure it's nice and flat that the seams are flat and tuck them in here in the corner and pin it down first to make sure that it stays in here in the corner and then you go to the other side and you 
pin that down and then you stitch this over same on the other side make sure you have the left and the right one of the back parts um, in order I've pinned down the side seams so we're gonna sew that I do that with my serger but you can certainly do that with your normal sewing machine with a straight stitch and then finish it with a, a overlocker stitch or a zigzag stitch but I like to do it with my serger and now while I'm using my serger I also gonna um, finish the edges of the uh, facings so that is i have to look at all this fabric where it is it's the part in the front that is hanging over and it is uh, the part in the back uh, that is um, the finish of the shoulder parts of your back parts so we're gonna finish that too is the finished part for so far for the top uh, it's all nice lines I finished these parts of the facing the side seams are uh, secured now and the only thing we have to finish here now is this part of the armhole from the front that didn't have a facing because the facing stops here so uh, I'm gonna fold this in and I think I will just uh, hand sew this so that you don't get a stitch because with this velvet it's not that nice when you see a stitching there and this part of facing is also nicely uh, finished so looks very good very nice I haven't tried it on but I'm gonna do that later on when I am um, doing the skirt and then I can see if I need to put some uh, darts in when it's too, uh, too wide um, down the, the waist but I don't want it too tight so we're gonna see how that is so put this aside for a bit and then we're gonna continue with the skirt and what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the side seams and then for the uh, left part of the front skirt we um, have to make the um, pleats here and you can choose if you want your pleats going up or going down usually I try it, I pin it in and I hold it in front of me and see what is nice, most nicely looking with the light falling on and I'm not sure if this dark blue what is nicest so I'm gonna try that then I pin it down and then I put my uh, back part on top of it the side, uh, side seam and we're gonna pin that down We're gonna pin that all the way down and then we're gonna sew it. We don't sew the uh, mid front, the, mi uh, the mid back already. So we just do the side seams for the left part and also for the right part. The right front part doesn't have the pleats there. It has the pleat on top so we don't have to do that now. So we're just gonna sew here the side seam. And then I'm gonna go back uh, and show you how we're gonna put the zipper in because with this I have a blind zipper and then I put the zipper in before I sew the seam that it gets in because then it's nicer to make when you have a blind zipper so I'm going to show you after this I also pinned on both facings of the curve of the skirt of the middle parts and we're gonna sew that on and finish the sides um, and I'm gonna see later on how I uh, attach that when I turn it over I think I want to do it with the um, 
a sort of glue that you can uh, iron on and then this is attached because I don't want any stitching along, around that uh, curve. So we're gonna sew that on and finish it later. So I pinned my skirt on my top, uh, on the bottom is the top, this is the skirt and I decided to make my top uh, about 4 cm uh, shorter because then the waist sits a bit nicely uh, on my waist, it sits just a bit uh, on top of my waist and I think with all these pleats here that looks really nice and it feels nice because it's a rather heavy dress because of the fabric and when the waist is a bit too low then it feels it gets under your waist and I don't like that so I made it about four centimeters short so uh, try it on before you uh, attach the skirt to the top maybe you have to do that too uh, I pinned it down I pinned the um, skirt that is on top uh, first on I'm gonna sew that first and then I'm gonna sew the skirt that's on the bottom uh, on top of that to make sure that it's nicely uh, aligned on top of each other and not that one is falling out or that pleats are not nice uh, nice and flat so I'm gonna do that now I'm gonna sew that on and then we're gonna uh, pin in the uh, zipper Yes, also people with much experience make mistakes, especially when it's going well and quick and you want to finish and then you don't watch out and you sew a fabric double when you want to uh, sew something together. And I have here something, well I don't think you can see it, but a part of the fabric of the underskirt went double where I was sewing. So I have to seam whip this whole part, you can see these pleats are not... not okay the way it should be and I have to take this out the whole thing so I'm busy for some time now see you later then we're gonna pin in our zipper and I have an invisible zipper um, and that means that um, I'll take it out and it's easier to see it means that on the outside you don't see the teeth can you see that it's, it's flat on the on the good side and on the wrong side you see the teeth as you normally see in a zipper so use that when you don't want uh, the zipper to be uh, seen uh, in your garment and especially in such a dress it's more nice to have a zipper like this uh, make sure you have uh, finished the edges of where you want the zipper to put in and then you <coughs> lay your zipper uh, what I always do is I, I hold it, I pin it and see if it's uh, okay because it's a little bit different than a normal zipper. Put it with the good side down, pin it and then fo uh, fold it over to see if it's okay. So I did that the right way. So you uh, pin it with the top of the zipper uh, aligned with the top of the dress, so where your facing is attached. I always give it a little bit more uh, space, a little bit more seam and then you pin it down to uh, where you want the zipper to end because uh, blind zippers aren't in that many lengths so uh, it's usually every 10 centimeters so 20, 30, 40 and you don't always want that much of length this is also very long so I think I'll take it till here and you can just cut it off, finish it here give it a double stitch and then you can just cut it off so I have to see how long I want it to be so pin that down and then it's easiest to pin down one side and uh, then uh, sew it and then go to the other side and I show you how to sew it because uh, also that is different from a normal zipper because you can really um, uh, fold these teeth open more to the side and then you can really pull uh, your uh, needle just between the uh, teeth and the, the lint and it's very important that you uh, 
take your needle as close as you can to the teeth and just to open them up because then you have the most uh, invisible zipper possible so I show you when I when I sew that on Can sew in the blind zipper now so make sure you use your um, zipper foot and put your needle the, as far aside as you as you can so I put it on my left position and what you do I hope you can see it I zoomed it in is you take your um, your nail and you fold open the teeth of the zipper as far as you can so that you can get your needle right into that uh, socket of the zipper teeth and then you get the neatest finish of your blind zipper So and best to uh, sew this is with your zipper open because then you can open it up uh, as you can open up the teeth when you have the zipper closed you cannot move the teeth so leave your zipper open and as you see I got even closer by the needle than my zipper because I sewed on my finger so that's why I have a band-aid now but we're gonna continue So now that the blind zipper in, the only thing we have to do is close up the uh, mid back seam and um, normally you always have the seam already done before you put the, the zipper in but with a blind seam that is not that uh, handy so what you can do now is you take your um, seam allowance together right underneath where your uh, blind zipper ends and then you put your pin in and make sure that your pin is exactly where the uh, stitching of the zipper ends from this side but also from this side so you must be sure that it's all together now and there is where your seam is gonna end and then you don't get an ugly bulb or whatever on the end of the blind seam and then you're gonna pin all the way down or if you want to do a slit you can do a slit now if you like to I won't so we're gonna pin this all the way down um, and then the only thing you have to do is hem the um, bottom of the skirt and I didn't already but maybe you did I haven't um, ironed the facing of the front part so I gonna iron this down and then with some uh, special tape I'm gonna tape this down because I don't want to stitch it over and I think then we are done yeah if you want and I'm certainly gonna do it because I hate it when facings are uh, loose uh, I'm gonna hand stitch a little bit the facings on the back and on the front and the only thing I have to make now is uh, I want a string around the waist to tie so I'm gonna make a long string I'm gonna measure how much I need to go all around and to make a bow in it um, and I was planning to do it just very small like half a centimeter one centimeter but if I have enough fabric I'm gonna make it a little bit wider because when I tried it on I thought it would look very nice if I had a more wider uh, velvet band um, around the waist so we're gonna see how much fabric I have to do that and um, we're gonna make that oh and one thing more you have to do is finish the little part of the armhole where there is no facing though so that's the front part of the armhole you have to hem that uh, hem that too and then we are finished and I think I will come back then with the end result because there's nothing else to do so good luck with the last part very much how the v-neck in the back looks like I put a white paper underneath so you can see how it uh, how it goes it looks very nice it's very nicely finished now with the facing uh, underneath and um, I took the zipper in between and I put my own tag of course in but you can uh, with this you can put your uh, zipper band uh, under the facing and yeah, I hand sew this down on the lint and that looks very nice and, uh, and neat like this so that's the back now and I decided to do the, can you see that? I think not, but then I will tell you. Uh, I decided to do the um, pleats in the side seam going upwards 
so it's folded like that because then the uh, light falls most nicely onto the fabric so I choose to do it to do it that way um, and yet yeah, the front of course the other part is just straight down nothing else to do with it just three on a row and it looks very nice like that and the dress is finished and I think it looks very nice I hope you can see it well in the mirror um, I like how it turned out I like all the pleats um, I like the belt that I made or oh, it's more like a web dress although it's a fake web dress because the skirt is attached but I like when there's something around your waist and you can cinch it in with a bow or just a knot or whatever I like it when you can adjust it to your waist and the only thing I didn't like or I didn't like I would have liked if it was uh, other is that I think this is a bit too high I would like it more when it was like this so I'm tugging all the time to get it stretch out a bit because it's just a little bit too high to my taste it's, it's very modest now but I would have liked if it was more lower and um, I could have known because um, I've made this call next many times before and when you have a very uh, thin fabric like a silk or a thin cotton or polyester then it will fall down very easily very low and when it's too low then you have a really problem because you can adjust it but this you can adjust either so it doesn't really matter but when you have uh, a thin fabric make sure you don't ever uh, go out on the making the picking of the pattern when you make it out no more than 45 degrees because otherwise you really you got your cold neck on your waist uh, but because this fabric is very heavy literally very heavy because this really weighs a lot um, and because it's a thick fabric it doesn't fall down that easily so it stays up more high so I could have adjusted the, the pattern way more up way more than the 45 degrees to get this cold neck a little bit lower that I had like more but I think it turned out really nice it's more modest now but I think that is appropriate for some occasions too so I like it very much and I'm just gonna tuck in a bit I was thinking maybe if I cut in the facing but that also doesn't help so um, it is what it is and I'm very happy with the result I like it very much and I'm even thinking if maybe I will wear this for Christmas because I can do the golden two piece but I like this one very much too so um, the part where it went wrong with sewing the skirt and I was very annoyed because I was telling you to uh, first sew the first skirt and then the other skirt on top of it to um, avoid that you get uh, a fabric doubled up or going underneath because it's so many layers that you don't can feel it and I told you to do that, I showed you to do it, I even did it myself, I never do that but I thought I'll teach you right how to do it to um, get no mistakes and then somewhere in the process I eventually uh, doubled up some fabric somewhere and it was like this sewed on and it was very annoying because this fabric is very hard to see with the dark thread and it's very difficult to see with it so I was really annoyed it was I was it was going so quick and so well and I was so happy with the result and it was one of the last things to do and then that happens and you ooh, you get oh, really annoyed so you will have that too many times before but I am um, sewing for so long that I don't usually have that and especially when I told you for do first one part of the skirt and then on top of the other because then you don't get problems I told you I did it and I got another problem and no, no matter it looks nice now I'm very happy with the result and uh, I hope you turned yours turned out to uh, very good um, if you like my videos please subscribe I always say that at the end of the video please share with your friends and family because it would be really nice if we got more people in sewing and especially in making your own products, making your own pattern, your own clothing, uh, what you like, uh, how you see it and what you really like in the shop but don't want to buy, you can really make it yourself. You've seen it, if you've seen all my videos, you can really make anything because it is not that difficult and everyone thinks that sewing is difficult and when you talk about pattern making, oh no, 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 I can't do it, I can't draw, I, no, I can't do that. Well, you saw I can draw and you don't have to know how to draw when you want to make a pattern just know what you want take your measurements right and you can draw it out it's, it's just a sketch it's not a, a nice um, drawing you have to make for a pattern it's just make your good measurements and uh, know how you make a pattern and as you've seen you just always use your basic and from the basic you make your specialty and that's why you can make anything you see when you know uh, how you have to make the pattern and when you don't know just go to the shops look take it out of the rack what you like take it not apart but uh, 
take it out and it inside out and you can see what form the front is, what form the sleeve is and uh, put it in your head or make a picture of it, go home and just draw that out and when you see that the sleeve has to be like this, then you make a sleeve like this, when you see it has to be this, then you make it like this, it's really all not that easy. So please tell your friends and family that you see these videos, that you like them, that you learn from them and uh, please let them subscribe so that we can grow and can, I can make more and more videos for you what you like to see. Let me know if you want me to make something that you like, uh, if you need any help in some pattern making, let me know and I'll make a video for you and for everyone to, uh, to do it like that. So I hope you liked it. Um, I'm trying to make videos during the uh, holidays and New Year's Eve. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do uh, sewing videos, but I'm trying to, uh, to upload some things. And I certainly will be back in the new year with uh, the sewing parts. And I already have some things lying, of course. So uh, I hope you like it. And I hope to see you uh, certainly next week with a video. Just don't know what kind of video. So thank you so much for watching again. And I'll see you next week. Bye.